Hey everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Valeria Contreras and I am the Advocacy Director for A Plus Colorado. And I am Juliet Siebold and I am the District Program Associate for Democrats for Education Reform, also known as DFER. Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie Perez Carrillo and um, I'm a Policy Analyst at the Colorado Children's Campaign. Thank you so much for your time, Steph. We'll just get right into questions. How are you doing? At first, let's just get that out of the way. Um, uh, today, it's been a good day. I think I woke up this morning and uh, just looked at really simple things, you know, like just enjoying the weather. My orchids are blooming, you know, they, they, they're they like an annual type of uh, flower. And so to see them bloom has been really life-giving. And so I'm, I'm focusing on things like that today. So doing well. How about you guys? I'm good. Good. <laughs> I'm, exactly. I'm doing well. Um, Looking good too. Thanks. Can you tell us a little more about um, yourself and the children's campaign, please? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't know where to start with me, but I guess I can start with where I'm from and where my family's from. You know, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. My parents are both Cuban, so I have the tendency of talking with my hands, which is hard to do on Zoom and talking really quickly. But, you know, um, I haven't lived in Miami for over, I don't know, seven years now because I've mostly been working in the education landscape at that time for a couple of years I was a teacher and then for the last couple of years I've been working at the children's campaign um, with some of that experience as a teacher to kind of inform statewide policy and advocacy and um, yeah when I'm not doing work I think I'm usually like training for you know a run or a ride I really like triathlons um, so the Children's Campaign is a statewide policy and advocacy organization. We're a nonpartisan uh, research organization. And so I think a lot of the policies that we advocate for at the statewide level, um, you know, are research based and it's mostly in the realm of K through 12, early childhood and then health as it relates to uh, policies that impact children and, and more recently, you know, focusing on things like family economic security and ensuring that kids have some of the basic things that they need. Uh, to be successful. Thank you so much. So I am not sure if you're, you might have a background knowledge of why we're doing this. Um, DFER and A-plus have collaborated to highlight some of our partners and the amazing work that they're doing during this time of transition, confusion. Um, we just, but we know that there's some amazing things that are happening in the community and we just wanted to um, shed some light on that, also provide resources to people. So can you tell us about your youth policy pipeline um, pilot for 2020, 2021? Yeah, yeah, um, it's been a really interesting time because I think uh, this project and this pilot was something that we have been working on for the last year and a half and it dates way back to when we had our luncheon in 20, I wanna say 2017. Um, we had a youth panel serve at our luncheon that year. And I think it was mostly because like we're the children's campaign, right? And so we know that there are a lot of young people doing incredible work in their respective communities. And that was the same year that Parkland happened. And so I think we really wanted to highlight the resiliency of youth and, and kind of what that movement prompted, right? Like that was a shift in youth advocacy and momentum. And so, you know, our luncheon, I think we wanted to be sure to, to highlight some of the incredible work that young people are doing in Colorado. But then after that, you know, post luncheon, um, one of the members of the Colorado Youth Congress, Amelia Federico, she was on our panel and um, she was getting ready to walk out of the luncheon and was like, hey, can I ask you a question? We had sat together the entire luncheon while her mom and I had. And she asked me, she was like, you're the children's campaign. Where are the young people that you guys are talking to um, when you're working on your policy? And I was like, excellent question. I don't know. Um, and so from there, you know, I think we realized that the, as the children's campaign that that was a necessary component and a necessary voice in our work. Um, but I think we were also mindful of all the other organizations that were doing incredible work at that time and even before that. So you have folks like the Youth Congress, uh, folks like YASPA, the Young Aspiring Americans for Social and Political Activism. You have folks like COYAC, the Colorado Youth Advisory Council, um, Molly at Our Turn. Um, you know, uh, Tanya at the Brighton Youth Commission, so many great people doing incredible work across the state. And so for, for up until, you know, last year, we were talking to folks about like, what are some of the biggest barriers or what are some of the biggest challenges that you face as an organization that's serving youth that have limited capacity and limited funding? Like what happens with young people when they know they have a desire to uh, 
um, pursue this as, as a career, but don't really know the, the fundamentals or don't really know the, the pathway to get there. I always tell young people as I talk to them about this project, how I landed in this job was kind of a happy accident, right? Like I was a teacher and then I didn't really know that policy and advocacy was something that I could inform as a teacher. I thought I had to be like a politician. I didn't really realize what that looked like. And so one of the things that I've learned is that um, in, in my role, it's important to share the pathway for the next generation and to think about like when a position does open up, recognizing that young people are the closest to the system we're working on, how can we ensure that their experience is infusing some of the decisions that is being centered in the decisions that are being made, um, recognizing that it's been at least 10 years since I've been in a classroom, right? And so there are a lot of things that have systematically and fundamentally changed. And so our, our, our laws and our policies a reflection of perceptions of our experiences and based on our experiences, or are they centered on the voices of people who have the expertise and the lived experience that's more recent and more nuanced and different? Um, and so, you know, uh, one of the things that we wanted to ensure was that if there were young people that had the energy and enthusiasm to continue their path forward in civic change as it relates to policy and advocacy, that they could maybe take a gap year or they could uh, transition from those youth serving orgs where sometimes they're term limited or they age out and they can come into this fellowship to continue that path towards civic change, specifically through policy, policy and advocacy and community organizing. And so really I think um, it was a partnership that was bred out of a lot of youth organizations coming together and saying, hey, there's a need here. How do we ensure that we address some of the pipeline challenges that we hear come up all the time? Got it. Thank you so much. So what is this going to look like during this pandemic? I know you started planning a year ago and you probably were hoping for in-person meetings and conversations, but what, so how is it going to look like now? Yeah, I think uh, we've had a lot of those questions in the last two months about what the shifts need to be. And I think first recognizing that there's nothing quite as personal as meeting in person and how do we create a space in Zoom, and this is just as for our fellowship, this is just in general, how do we create a place in Zoom that like allows people to process like where we're at right now and you know uh, where we're gonna be for the foreseeable future and using that as an opportunity for develop, developing deeper relationships. And so I think um, from the very beginning, this project was centered on the voice of young people. And so, you know, even when we were thinking about what we wanted young people to accomplish over 18 months, this was unprecedented because the children's campaign has never done this, but then it was going to be or is going to be centered on the experience of what youth want and need as it relates to their personal development. So you have really three lanes, right? You have one, your personal theory of change as a young person. Secondly, you have, you know, the roadmap that you need in terms of your personal development and professional development. And then thirdly, what a cohort model really um, facilitates and fosters is this collective work towards something. And so being able to work on all three of the, the head, the heart and the arms, or, you know, you hear about these different spaces that touch young people. And so when, when I got together with the, young, uh, with the youth serving organizations two months ago, I was like, is this even the right project right now? Do you think young people have the capacity, the head space, the heart space to do this and to move forward in this? And I think what I heard resoundingly was that like, we, they need this now more than ever. They need something, um, invest their energy their mental space their um their will into and so we're going to try to tap into that in a way that creates positive change you know and i think after connecting with uh sam and some others and you know just reading different blog posts and uh listening to different podcasts the question is like how are we using this moment to fundamentally shift things like education how are we thinking about our collective future and what might that look like in partnership with young people who have such different and creative ways to think about the world and to address some of the biggest problems that we see in education. Um, and so I think I'm really hopeful about what that process is going to look like. And in the next uh, three weeks or so, we're going to be scheduling um, some time with those young people to say like, hey, here are the things that are timely. Uh, does this align with what you want to work on? And what skills do you need to, in order to, um, to work on some of these pieces? Recognizing that so many things are shifting, but this is something that we can get behind and dig our heels in. Thank you so much for that, Stephanie. I think all of that sounds great and like a really good opportunity for youth. Um, our next question being, how do you think youth will directly benefit from being a part of this programming? 
Yeah, I think right now um, it's hard to understand anybody else's experience or what anybody else is going through in this context, like at any given moment. And so I think at the very least, um, having a peer that maybe you wouldn't otherwise connect with um, and having that connectivity to think about, okay, like as humans, what do we need right now? But then like after we get to some of those basic level needs, like what are some ways that we can actualize or dream about what the future might look like? And how might we invest like the energy that we have, right? And so um, I think like one of my greatest hopes is that uh, policies like 16 and 17 year old vote in school board elections or even having youth advisory boards and councils, young people who are informing decisions. I think those are some of the greatest hopes that I have for how this time uh, is being used. And then when I think about what the cohort model has done for me through my own experiences in cohorts is the opportunity for healing and rejuvenation and like refreshing, right? Um, I think this work is really exhausting for a lot of reasons. Change is hard and takes time. And as a, as a young person or even trying to help a young person understand, like, there are some realities, you know, that when, that when it comes to change and the process of it, and how do we ensure that we're refilling our cups as individuals when we're doing this work, but then the cups of the collective people that are working on this, specifically people of color, um, recognizing that a lot of work happens you know, on their heels and on their backs. And so, you know, I think the hope is that this space also provides racial healing and um, all the other types of healing that come along with uh, the components of this work that sometimes feel destructive and hard. I hope that answered your question. Okay. Yes, it does. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So as you kind of explained, it seems like a really unique program and a great opportunity for young people to learn about policies and also bring out some issues that um, is important to them. How are you, what does recruitment look like? So how are you promoting the program? How are you getting students signed up? Can you walk us through that process? Sure, um, yeah, so I think it's kind of been a thought out process in that we're relying on a lot of the youth serving organization partners who um, kind of provide like a 101, like an intro to systems change. This is like the next level 201. And so initially when we started thinking about what recruitment would look like. Um, we thought that it would make sense to kind of um, have that be at the discretion of the executive directors um, or the CEOs of those respective organizations to say like, hey, these are four young people that completed our program, you know, recently and that have uh, vested interests or have said that they want to study this or have said that they have a passion about this as a career, but are maybe taking a gap year or are staying home to work and to support their families. And so it initially started with outreach to those respective folks. But then, you know, once we had a few information sessions with young people, we had two in the last month over Zoom. Once we had an information session with those young people, questions came up around like, have you shared it with this group or have you shared it with this group? And so I think there's been a core group of organizations that have been working to recruit uh, young people but then there's been a group of tertiary organizations that have heard about this and have said like, oh, I think, you know, I have young people that would be interested. So um, really what's happened is there's been, it's been a two-step process or will be a two-step process. Right now, what you're hearing about and what you've seen thus far is uh, to apply for and fill out the interest survey. And the interest survey really helps us understand who are you as a human being? Like, are you like, where, where, where do you, where are you born? Where, like, what school district did you go to? How old are you? What, what affiliate, if any organizations have worked with before? What is uh, one thing you want to change in your respective community? And so that first phase is going to May 29th, where we're just accepting interest surveys. And then after that, I think we're going to bring all the folks that filled out interest surveys together to say, this is what the program is. This is how it shifted from what we initially had in mind when we received the funding to support this and in light of COVID and kind of the ways that, you know, the new normal, this is, this is how the program is going to operate. And like, what do you think about that? And so the next, the next phase after May 29th will really be co-creation in terms of our objectives and outcomes, because I do really want this to be driven in youth voice and youth outcomes that matter to them. Like if it were a traditional program, I would say, well, the five objectives are X, Y, and Z. This isn't that. I think this is uh, us bringing together young people who know what they want to do and just some just need some of the expertise and some of the uh, partnership in figuring out how to get there and then working on that together. Um, and so over the course of June, we'll be working 
to bring the interest, uh, the, the folks that fill out that interest survey together and then having one-on-one -on -one meetings with each of them to help them develop their personal development plan, which more clearly and more um, meticulously defines uh, what they want their theory of change to be within their personal and professional development goals. Um, and so that's kind of what the timeline has looked like. And um, those, are, those are the ways that we've uh, done recruitment and have shared this program with people. Thanks, Steph. You kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, what other ways does your partnership look like with other organizations um, aside from recruitment? Like, is there any other way that you all are partnering for this programming? Yeah, I think, you know, um, it's been interesting because like a lot of the people that lead these organizations are my friends, right? And so the way we've talked about what we think the greatest needs in our communities are have shifted. And, you know, in some ways it's been like, hey, Sam, there's this climate action group that's working in, in Denver. And I know that a lot of young people have expressed interest in climate change. Like, let me send this opportunity to you. Or Janice, um, you know, the Department of Education is working on concurrent enrollment and they have this pilot. Like, do you have any young people that want to be involved? And so, you know, up until this point, the children's campaign, I think one of the things that we, we view or we feel really strongly is that we're kind of like bridge builders, right? You have all these kind of agencies and institutions uh, that have like really formal structures and structures that are, you know, um, are rooted in sometimes systemic and structural racism. And so I think for us as bridge builders, we're trying to help people understand what the language looks like to have um, your theory of change uh, or, or what change you want to make get through to some of the people that are at, you know, in these larger institutions and agencies. And I really think the best way to describe it is kind of like social capital, right? Like, how are we using the power and privilege that we have to connect people who otherwise wouldn't have that connection? And so in the past, that's how it's looked in partnership with these youth serving organizations. And now it's more, Steph, we want to ensure that this pilot is successful. We think it has the opportunity to kind of change the game and what youth work looks like and youth advocacy at the statewide level looks like. And so, you know, it's been, um, it's been collaborative and it's been a partnership along the way. So it's just shifted because, you know, I've never wanted to say like, do this for the children's campaign. Rather, I know you're working on this and here's an opportunity that maybe you weren't aware of because you're just so hyper-focused on your local uh, um, campaigns or your local actions. Um, or your local community projects, because I know, you know, we've been partnering with folks in different parts of the state in Southwest Colorado who are like, we just have different community service projects and this is how we engage young people. But from there, they, they want to continue and they just don't know how. And so I think that's the other piece where we'll just, again, be like, um, it's like marrying two really beautiful things that are necessary um, to make really good policy and advocacy. Awesome. Thank you. I really like that bridge builders. And I have benefited uh, personally and for um, some of my students that I've worked with from that, those programs that you have. So I'm super excited. I'm already thinking of several students that I want to be a part of this. Um, this is just a follow up question. You probably touched on this. Is this fellowship just uh, policy based or policy focused? Yeah, I think the main the main focus is policy and advocacy because that's kind of what the children's campaigns focus is. Um, you know, and when you think about the uh, the organizations that we're planning on partnering with at the statewide level that are going to serve as kind of adult partners, they're also in the statewide policy and advocacy space. So it's mostly for those kids who are like, yeah, I know what I want my role in civic change to look like, um, and this is just a way for me to get some of, some more of those skills. Um, and I think the other piece is, you know, um, in some of these youth serving organizations, uh, as, the, as they're volunteering or as they're understanding what their passion for this looks like, they move into a place where they're like, oh, I can actually earn money for this as a career, right? Like, how do we ensure that these young people are getting paid for their intellectual labor? And so that's the other piece that I think um, we're offering, right? Like, we're going to pay you like this is a job because we're asking you to do the hard work of like thinking through really important policies that require a lot of thought and require a lot of like action and, um, you know, uh, take a lot of emotional capacity. So I think um, it's different. In, it's different in that way. But I, I do think it is very specifically catered to young people who are interested in policy and advocacy as a career. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So where can our young um, listeners, our young people who are like, I'm interested in this, where can I go to fill out the survey? Yeah. way to get involved. 
Yeah, it's funny because one of the things that emerged during like the Zoom information sessions was like, do you have this on your website somewhere? Or they're like, I tried to look on your website to find this and I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh, um, I didn't think about it because, you know, initially I mentioned to you where this was a very targeted outreach, um, you know, very intentional outreach that we were coordinating with these youth surf organizations. And then we realized like, I don't know that we need to be that targeted. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, once we have this, con this conversation with the interest survey group, we can kind of like say like, this is what it is and this is what it isn't. And if you want to continue on in the next phase, that's okay. Um, and so I think our website has been the best portal for that. Um, and I can, I can send along a link, but I think uh, that's been kind of the main way. And then just emailing me, there've been, uh, you know, several young people that have reached out to me because my, my email is what's listed on the website, Stephanie um, at coloradokids.org. And that's been another, uh, been another way that folks get in touch um, and learn more about this uh, policy pipeline pilot. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for doing this interview with us. We're super excited about it. Um, and we'll share your contact information. I know the deadline. What's the deadline for the survey? Yeah. So the interest survey, it's through a Google form and uh, the deadline for that is May 29th. And you could find that at coloradokids.org. And, you know, I can share the link with you all. Um, and then I think just in general, if you're interested in learning more about the children's campaign work, we have a newsletter, we're on social media, we're on Instagram and Twitter um, and Facebook and all those pieces. And so, you know, if you're interested in learning about our work more broadly, that's a, those are really great resources. And then we have our podcast uh, called The West Steps. My friend uh, and, and coworker Beza is the one who kind of hosts that show. And, you know, I think just sharing more broadly um, some of the work that the Children's Campaign does as it impacts uh, kids and families in Colorado. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Steph. And we're looking forward to hearing about the Youth Policy Program Fellowship um, and to see kind of what it's doing for young people. But thank you again for your time and thank you to the Children's Campaign for all the amazing work you're doing. Thanks so much for having me. You guys are great. You're wonderful. Thank you for your time, Steph. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I, you know, what a joy. What a delight.